Gitanjali Shree's Tomb of Sand has created history by becoming the first novel in an Indian language to win the International Booker Prize. The jury described it as a masterclass in exploring identity imbued with a passion and power which the world could do with right now. Gitanjali Shri shares the International Booker Prize with her translator, Daisy Rockwell, and it's an absolute pleasure to be talking to both these incredible women. Many, many congratulations. Thank you. Gitanjali Shri, uh, Tomb of Sand is being described in so many ways as a partition novel, a feminist fable, a stream of consciousness novel. How would you categorize it and what does winning the international booker mean? I don't want to categorize it at all. I think it's uh, all those things and many more things and that is hopefully what makes it uh, something enjoyable and something worthwhile. Um, about the booker, uh, well, I, it's uh, wonderful. I mean, it's a, it's a huge recognition. I don't think um, we were at all prepared for this. We never imagined that this was going to happen. And slowly and uh, surely it kept getting, um, you know, better and better. The b book was on the long list and then the short list. And then yesterday what happened happened. And we are... Um, we are uh, in a state of beautiful shock mm -hmm. and still um, taking it in. And I think it's a wonderful, wonderful recognition for this book, for Daisy's uh, translation, the English uh, uh, um, incarnation of it, but also for uh, literature in um, Hindi and in other Indian languages and South Asian languages. Yes, indeed. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But Daisy, you've uh, designed this gorgeous cover as well, apart from uh, translating the book. And you began as an artist signing your works as La Pata or The Missing. So tell us a little about that. Why La Pata and when and where did you learn to read, write and speak in Hindi? So those are all different questions. But I um, started studying Hindi in college. So when I was around 19 years old and I um, visited India several times and, and um, was, was um, in different programs, so I learned how to speak and read well enough to read literature. And um, the La Pata part has to do with the fact that I, I did a PhD in South Asian literature and I um, was an academic for about 15 years and, and I suddenly decided it wasn't for me and I left. I wanted to do more creative work and um, but I kind of wanted to be free of everything so you know of my past career so I created what in Udu is called a Tafalus which is La Pata and I signed my, my paintings with it in Urdu so I was sort of missing yeah. from my career and eventually that became my career the place where I had gone off to missing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So Hindi, Urdu, you straddle many worlds, many languages also. Uh, but Gitanjali Shri, this award comes at a time when there are all these raging debates here in India on language imposition. Um, you write in Hindi, but you've talked very movingly in your acceptance speech about the rich literary traditions of all South Asian languages. So how do you feel about the language debate? Well, I, I, don't, I think a lot of it is uh, politically created and completely unnecessary. Um, we are a multilingual nation and um, I think human beings are capable of learning more than one language. So I don't see what the problem is. I mean, we are a country with so many languages. Why can't all of us learn more than one language and live bilingually and multilingually as indeed uh, a lot of us, I think, did? Why is there today this need for one single language, uh, whatever that be? So I, I do think that there has to be recognition of all the national languages and of the um, equality of languages and the richness of languages. And uh, we should learn uh, at least two languages, I think. But that's a political debate. I mean, I don't want to um, speak uh, just now too much about it. Right. I'm very tired. Fair <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. Daisy, uh, you've translated, among other things, Bhisham Sahani's Tamas, but you say Tomb of Sand or Red Samadhi was actually the most difficult work you've ever translated. Why was that? Uh, because there's 
um, a lot of experimentation with language and word, word play and also um, ex an experimental approach to plot and really everything about it. So nothing was straightforward, something like Thomas is written almost in the style of, you know, journalistic writing. It's very clear, um, one thing leading to another and so on. So it's not that it was easy to translate, but um, I found it much um, more straightforward of a task than right. Tomb of Sandwich was um, very yeah. difficult. And, and Gitanjali, she, given the fact that uh, you were in New Delhi and uh, Daisy was in uh, Vermont, what sort of, you know, it was, and it was all long distance through the pandemic, what conversations would we have overheard between the two of you while uh, this collaborative process was taking place? Well, um, on very, very detailed uh, conversations about uh, the context of certain things which would be written in the book about language, um, about the uh, choice of certain words, like um, uh, um, Daisy wanted tomb on the title, <laughs> and my title was Samadhi, and we talked about that. I mean, how is Samadhi to be rendered into English, and uh, how would tomb uh, uh, retain that quality and not destroy it? So we had conversations about language, about the facts, about the way the story... Uh, the, the um, narr narrative was going, all kinds of very detailed conversations. And I think so, we interacted so much and in uh, um, such a, for such a long time, I mean, so intensely, I think, that finally when we met just a few days ago in London, we felt we had known each other forever. That's right. Um, Daisy, how do you respond to critics who say translations can never really tap into the essence of a story or, you know, for instance, those who say English translations represent a Western gaze uh, on India? As, as someone who sort of lived and breathed Hindi and Urdu, do you have mm -hmm. a different take on this? Um, I think translation has been going on between languages forever since there's been more than one language. Um, and so I understand the inequality between English and various Indian language and the colonial legacy. But at the same time, that colonial legacy makes it so that there are many people, even within India, who can't access so many different stories in different languages, and they need and rely on translation if they want access to those things. So I like to think that my translations are serve also as an invitation to people who feel estranged from Hindi or from Urdu to, um, you know, give it a try to look at them side by side, to come back, to consider uh, what they've lost and to try to find it again. Um, Gitanjali Shri, from Mai to Reit Samadhi, you know, your works have articulated the voices of women. So who were the women who left the biggest imprint on your life? And do any personal stories feature in your work? Um, personal stories, certainly, but I, not as biography or autobiography. Um, personal stories come with many, many other things. They come with my imagination. They come with my... Um, with the uh, observation of uh, lots of uh, things around me. They come with uh, osmosis, where sometimes I don't even know where I'm picking up things from. So all different elements come together, and these personal stories become fictional stories. And you can't, you know, um, really, I mean, they, they, they have so many strands in them that you can't really start sifting those and saying, this is fiction, this is fact. I mean, it's just some other entity. Um, I've forgotten what your second question was. <laughs> well, no, that, that was really the question. Uh, you know, whether from my, you said from my... Yeah, from your life, from your women. life. Women. Yeah. yeah, so of course women, I think women play a big role in all our lives, not just uh, mine. I mean, I think, <laughs> uh, in fact, women are often... Uh, uh, underrated, they are uh, not seen as much as uh, they should be. They are often behind the scenes and women are very important in uh, our lives. So of course there have been women, but I do want to say that my work from Mai to Reit Samadhi is not only women-centric. Right. I mean, I have important uh, other kinds of characters also and male 
characters also. And of course, you write on sort of critical... They are protagonists. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you also write on critical political themes as well. But when you talk about partition, it's a very nuanced idea of what is beyond the border. You say Pakistan is not far away, we're removed from it. Would you say now more so than ever? Yeah, I think um, uh, it's become a very fraught issue. It's, um, you know, it's, it, 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 should, it was supposed to be a certain kind of political solution, not um, meant to just divide people and divide their hearts. And I think it has been doing that. And uh, one of the uh, sad things, it, um, a lot of people, you know, uh, derived or deduced from that was that Hindus and Muslims cannot live together, and that is why partition is necessary. That is an ideology which is in different ways being promoted today, and therefore partition continues to play such a role in our lives. One last question, and Daisy, if you'd like to answer this, uh, is this the beginning of a long and beautiful partnership? Well, uh, we hope so. Thank you. <laughs> <Certainly. laughs> I, I do certainly think so, yes. yes. <laughs> All right. We look forward to many more wonderful works uh, from both of you. Thank you so much for speaking Thank with us. Yeah. Thank you.